It is 5.30 Eastern Time, and as promised, we're starting on the dot. I apologize if I couldn't get right back to the last live stream. Unfortunately, as soon as I got off the live stream, my phone was ringing, and I had to go to Ford dealership and pick up my car. I had um, actually on New Year's Day, well, actually New Year's Eve, we had a, learned that I had a, a, tie, a, a nail in my tire. And on New Year's Eve, as you can imagine, trying to get my tire serviced on New Year's Eve, like at 3 p.m., was next to impossible. So uh, New Year's Day, I woke up with a flat tire. And uh, I'm not a fan of going to like Tire King in most places. I like to take my truck to the dealership. So uh, I took it to the dealership. And uh, so when I got off, it was ready. So that's why we didn't come back on. But no worries. Hopefully, it's 5.30 p.m. Some people have gotten off work. And so we can get a bigger attendance. Happy New Year's to you, Jerome Herr. Happy New Year's, Random Flavors, 316. And um, looking forward to this conversation today. So welcome one, welcome all. As I always like to state, this is your opportunity with Omicron running around. And now what? What do they call it? Fluorant? The new flur virus? Fluorocron, which is like the flu and COVID together. Uh, with all this craziness going on, this is definitely... An opportunity uh, Ford Expedition is what I have the big one. I have the Ford Expedition with the extended on the back. So, I you know that's a funny. I'm glad you, it's funny. Well, I'm not glad you asked me, but uh, I'm able. I'm a I'm a a long time ago when I was like in my early twenties. I had a, a, this BMW. I had the brand new BMW. It was like it came off the showroom floor. It was like twenty miles on it. Florona. There you go. And uh, it had run flat tires, which is those new tires they were testing. And I remember that stupid car. And like after, I don't know, after like six months, it kept giving me problems. And I went and my buddy and I, we actually bought them together. And so he had like the six series and I had just the three series. But we both had problems with our batteries. And then we had problems with the tires and then like the wearing on it. And then they wouldn't crank. And would you believe that it was a Ford, my parents had an old Ford Explorer truck. Like they had like a, this was like 2000 and I want to say 2005, 2006. My parents had like a 1994 Ford Explorer. And their 1994 Ford Explorer used to jumpstart my brand new 2005 BMW. And ever since I had that experience, I've been buying Fords ever since and for trucks purposes. And so uh, all of my buddies have fours, F-250, F-350, F-450, and I just stuck with that. When I travel, it's funny when I travel up north, I notice that some guys carry GMCs. And then when I travel out to like the Panhandle, they're like big Chevy boys. So um, Ford, GMC, Chevy, that's that's like pretty much what we keep standard. So, but the big ones. Um, so yeah. Um, it's, it's 250, 350s, you know, it. so, hey, but listen, thank you everyone. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to jump into today's session. I see we got a couple people signed up for the members. Thank you so much, Christopher Butler. Welcome to GovCon Beginners. Uh, Adrian, welcome to GovCon Insider. And for those of you who are not familiar with the membership, I just want to show you, uh, we actually on YouTube, as low as $5 a month. You could sign up for uh, membership to our channel. And let me just give you an idea. So in, as you see here, in the membership videos, there's 42 additional videos that are not public. And let me pull it up just so you can see it for yourself. And you see what you're receiving. Uh, we've actually, we're, we're putting a lot of time into the, and effort into all this stuff. Um, hold on. So as, as you see here, these are all classified. Second, give me a browser load. I'll pull over so you can see it. So you'll see here all of these videos that are labeled members only. And when you get into the videos, we actually have someone that's gone in. As you see, they're an hour and fifty minutes, an hour forty eight minutes, fifty three minutes. This isn't like five minutes of content. Bunch of content. And we actually paid someone to go in and I'll click on one of these videos so you can see what I'm talking about. 
But all this content is actually separated by chapters. So when you come down here, it's actually separated by chapters. And so you don't have to, you can go to like what's in an RFP, wage determination. Let's see, how do I get paid? Showing expenses in RFP, instruction for preparations of a proposal, management proposal presentation. So this is already broken down actually in here into chapter formats. So we've, we've actually hired someone specifically just to do that in particular and to make it easier on people. But there's a lot of content in the members only section. 14. Uh, definitely. Okay. Uh, listen. I want to share that with folks out there just so they know um, and get an idea. But yep, we have a members only section on YouTube starting as low as $5 a month. So if it's something that you think might make sense, check it out and visit today. But today, by the way, first and foremost, please tell me who you are. I want to know who's out there. Tell me who you are. So let me know. A couple things. Hit the like button, number one. Number two, let me know who you are. Tell me your industry. Tell me your city, if it's not listed on here, and tell me your name. Thank you. All right. Oh, for F350. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Lariat. That's right. Hi. I see you for F350. All right. So, but listen, um, yo, tell me, um, tell me who you are, tell me your industry, and hit the like button also, please. Right? Let's show some love because again. Oh, look at Jerome Hurt. Eric, I had a BMW. And it left me high on 95 in Miami. Never get Exactly. Yo, that's crazy, right? Like, I, I tell people all the time. Again, I've had friends with Range Rovers. They're like the worst car in the world is a Range Rover. So uh, hit the like button. 31 people watching. Only 16 likes today. Hit the like button um, so that we can know that we're doing some good work out here. That's why I don't have a million views because y'all not sharing this stuff with nobody. Y'all keeping me a secret, which is fine. It's cool because at least I know that the people who are on here are making the most of the time and the content. So uh, tell me who you are. Tell me the industry that you're in. So when we're going through and we're looking at all of this goodness on here, uh, I can talk to you. I can talk to your industry. And if you missed the earlier live session, we went through the eight mistakes, most common mistakes that people make on Sam.gov. At the very end of that call, that live session, we actually pulled someone's profile up on the screen and I was able to critique their profile right on the screen. So uh, again, oh, Brande, what's up, Brande? Uh, so again, if uh, you know you have a question or something that you want answered, it definitely helps um, that we can pin you to the top. And this particular gentleman, uh, he had the privilege of us going through and evaluating his SBA profile at the end of that session. So welcome everybody uh i see a couple people let me know who they are let's see i've got in here lindsey king industrial maintenance training electrical controls adonna from trinidad market research services my man teddy's on board i got patricia lewis california real estate consultant chieftain northern virginia that's my man chieftain yo if y'all want tips on how to get a six-pack talk to chieftain chieftain to help you get that six-pack right my man Chieftain over here on Facebook showing a six pack off. So if y'all want to know how to get a six pack, talk to Chieftain on here. But if y'all want to know how to do government contracts, you're in the right place. Let's jump into it. All right, we're in Sam.gov. And, um, you know, it's interesting. I haven't done this in a while. So I actually had to get reacclimated myself. Uh, we've got people doing it for us. But listen, we're in Sam.gov. Sanford, Florida. Get out of here. Oh, Sanford. Um, yep, so we're in Sam.gov. And make sure that you're signed in on Sam.gov, please. Because if you're not signed in, you will not be able to do any of the things that I'm saying. So make sure that you're first and foremost, you see here at the top. I can't see it. Hold on. Oh, can't see it either. There. But at the top, right across where my big head is on the screen, let me take my head off of here. See right there, it says sign out. So that means that I'm signed in. So uh, just want to make sure that you guys are signed in on Sam.gov in order to take advantage of the things that we're showing you. And I say this because of experience has taught me 
that people will uh, not be signed in and then say, Eric, you know, I was trying to go back and do what you did and it didn't work. So unless you're signed in, this won't work for you. All right, so we're looking at bid opportunities. Uh, and by the way, just for people's edification and knowledge, uh, if what we're talking about today, let me pull it up. We have a video here and it's called Understanding the Letter Template Used for RFIs and Sources Sought. We're, this is what we're specifically going to be talking about and discussing in today's video. It's looking at sources sought opportunities. Uh, hopefully, for the most part, people know what a sources sought opportunity is. Um, sources sought is the government, part of the government's process before they put out a project for bid is to do market research and investigate if there are in fact any qualified small businesses that are capable of doing the work. Prior to them putting out solicitation, they have to perform market research to determine whether or not there are any qualified small businesses that are able to do this work. How do they do that? Well, they do it using what's called sources sought RFIs. The other way that the government does that is what we showed you over here. They come to the SBA's website and they go in and they look at people's SBA profiles. I'll show you here. And they look at your DSBS profile. They come to this site and they look at people's profiles and they determine based on keywords, NAX codes, certifications, if in fact who they should be targeting for an opportunity that they have coming out of their office. So earlier in the video, if you missed it, uh, that's what we mentioned is making sure that in fact, your profile here was up to par so that you could qualify for these opportunities. Uh, the second thing we're gonna talk about is how do you find opportunities? One, most common people go on here just to look for RFPs and combined synopsis solicitations. The issue is that the government, by the time that they put it out, the requirement, if none of us, and I'm saying us, meaning like the 36 people that are currently watching, if none of us respond and let the government know that we are out here, we exist, we're qualified, we're capable to go after this particular project, then the chances are really high that they put it out full and open competition or they put out standard small business and they put it out to the masses because they've determined that no small businesses qualify or uh, have the ability to execute and perform the project. And that's really sad because we are our own worst enemy. We're essentially shooting ourselves in the foot by failing to respond to sources sauce. So let's give ourselves and our other fellow small businesses uh, adequate opportunities, adequate chances so that these things come our way and they don't go to the large companies. Because it's one thing to sit around and complain. It's another thing to do something about it. And so I'm hoping that the 40 people watching, after they hit the like button, after they put their industry in the chat, and after they tell me what city they're in, I'm hoping that the 40 people here take heed and start to actually apply these things and respond. You have no idea how many people have actually, from us teaching them how to do this, have actually won contracts because once you learn and understand this process, then this is another way for you to market your small business to the government. So let's jump into it. Stop running my mouth, as my man likes to say, and jump into it. I'm in sam.gov, and let me just go back to the home page so we can so you can see you start off from scratch. And it's really simple. Again, hit search. Uh, they're doing a, a good job with Sam now. They're making it better. Uh, when I search here, I look under contract opportunities. And under contract, by the way, if you have got questions, drop your questions down in there as well. Uh, look for contract opportunities. Uh, and then here under notice type, I check the box. Where is it at? Uh, sources sought. All right, and we don't want to look at all the sources sought, so we're going to look at just the ones that are due, let's say, next week. All right, 
So it gives me a result of 341 results. Everybody see that? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Good stuff. All right. All right. So now it's got 341 results. Now over here in the corner, there's a little button up here that says action, action. So over here, see that action. So there's three little dots. I click action comes up on the screen. It says save or download. We're going to go ahead and click download. All right, CSV file. All right, and then I'm hitting the download button. And that's gonna download. Now, why do we do this? Anybody tell me why do I do this? Because even though this site is pretty good in terms of the way it's laid out and organized, uh, as you see, trying to scroll through, it's showing me on the screen here, it says, look, 1 through 25 of 341 results. So in order for me to go through this, I've got to scroll down the page. It, they do now, they they have changed it where I can change the results. So I can put 100 items on the page and I can scroll through it this manner. And you can just scroll, 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 scroll. Or, and then you got one of four pages. Or we can come over here to my handy dandy Excel spreadsheet. And now, as you see, it's a different format in terms of looking at it horizontally, which is the way the IRS read, and being able to determine and being able to see if this fact that like all of the opportunities in one place uh, in an easier, in, in my opinion, in an easier uh, viewing display so that we can quickly go through and find out whether or not there's anything on here that makes sense for us. Now, Eric, why can't you just, let's go back to the screen. Why, right? I, I, let me try to think of some of the questions people might ask me. And the first question that comes to mind is, well, Eric, can't you just type in the word here or can't you just type in the NAX code here, place performance set aside? Yes, you can. So you can type in keywords, you can search by NAX code, uh, you can do all of those things. The problem is, is that, and, and I'll show you this throughout the example today, the, the problem is that the government is inconsistent in how they put the information into the system. And so given that the government is inconsistent in how they put the information into the system, then that leads to inconsistent results. And because uh, this is only a database, this is not the GSA doing this. They're just maintaining this database. Because this is a database, turn my screen, I think it was in my face. Because this is just a database, the, the actual users of this particular system, sometimes they may have an intern putting this in. And what if the person puts the information in and it's not proper and you miss out on the chance to respond to an opportunity because someone put it in wrong? And you might say, well, Eric, how often does that happen? Well, how often does it have to happen for you to get upset and bothered by it? Once, twice, three times. So again, I just want to make sure until the government, until the government can give us a system that is consistent, um, where we are assured that all 100% of the possible opportunities for me are on the uh, screen and displayed and searchable, then I recommend that um, whoever is on your staff doing this look across all the opportunities just to ensure that you didn't miss anything. And so that's the reason for pulling it down in this manner because while we, yes, we can search it, um, I don't want to leave anything to chance. So that's my reason. Now, we're over here. We've talked about what is a source of SOT. Uh, we've also mentioned to you um, why you want to look at source of SOT. We mentioned market research. Let me do one more thing for you.
probably not many people have been to our website, govcongiants.com. This is our website, and I'm on govcongiants.com slash resources. This is our resource page. And on our resource page, you will find what we have here, sources, sought, notice, letter of intent that you can download free of charge. You don't have to put in your email. You click download, and there it is. Anyone can download it. So I would encourage you, go to that page, download that resource. Also on our resources page, we have here GovCon Giants 360 Action Plan. Now, I... Because my uh, marketing team is actually in the Philippines and they had a typhoon, it's the action plan probably is dated 2020. But what does it matter? Because it's the same plan for the you know from 2020 to 2021 to 2022. It's the same plan, the same activities to do, and it gives you a list of activities to do and follow along with. So if you have not visited our website, govcongiants.com resources page. This is where you can find a sample that I provided free of charge of how do you respond to the source of sought notices. All right. Fair enough. Good. So everything that we're talking about today um, on the screen, all the things that we're looking at here. Right. And you'll see here it says sources sought. Right. So again, um, we've got a letter template for you to follow and use and people have used it successfully and made money with it because they want a contract. All right, so let's go through and look at some opportunities. And the reason why I said put in there your industry is because, oh, my man, Lafayette, I see you, baby. Hey, look, logistics, car wash, etc. I see you, brother. That was my man who we helped out today. D E R. He was like, he's a logistics business. And then I went to his SBA profile. He had on there, he did car wash and stuff. So I, look, I appreciate you for being, for, you know, for being brave and sharing your story because, you know, look, everybody not going to do that. Everybody not going to do that. So thank you for being brave and sharing your story with us today. All right. Good stuff. Um, so let's go over here to the screen. Is this zoomed in enough for everybody? By the way, 52 people watching, 35 likes. Get those likes up. All right. Now, is this zoomed in big enough? Can you guys see it? Is this good? Are we good? We good? We good on this? All right. All right. So let's look at these. We're over here. We're looking. We pull down a list for the people that just coming on. We start off in Sam. Right. We went to contract opportunities. Then under contact opportunities, we pull down sources sought and I looked at responses that are due next week because it's really hard to do this stuff. Uh, I mean, if you want to be aggressive and put within the next two or three days, that's fine. Uh, but again, it's just an example for people just to show an example. And it was 341. Uh, we went ahead and clicked actions. I clicked download, we downloaded the information, pulled it into Excel. And now we're over here on our Excel sheet. And that's what we're looking at. All right, now, we're over here in an Excel sheet. You guys don't mind. I hope you don't mind if I take my big head off the screen. Uh, looks like I'm blocking the view. So I'm going to hide, but I'm still here with you, just so you know. Um, oh, you know what? I'm just covering up the date, so it doesn't matter. All right. Let me move myself. I'll move myself in a corner. All right. Cool. All right, so we're here on the screen, Contract Opportunities. And if there's anything that someone sees that they want to me to pull down and discuss, because we're actually going to pull down some real life examples, let me know. All right. So if there's anything on the screen that you see that you want to discuss, let me know and I'll be happy to pull it down and discuss it. I'm, by the way, I'm monitoring the chat at the same time. All right. Uh, let's see. Minor construction, IT building, Shreveport. Ooh, veteran medical center. Um, Let's see, do I have anybody here from Shreveport? Not that I know of. I do have my man from Louisiana. Uh, let's see what else. Partnership Intermediary Agreement. Dry Cargo Voyage Charter. Okay, this is logistics. It's a voyage charter. Um, sometimes, we, one of our students, Chris Facey, 
I actually worked for a logistics company. Well, he had his, I don't know how it was set up. I think he's like a broker for a logistics company, but they handle air, sea, and trucks. So if you are the kind of person that works for that kind of carrier that has air, sea, and truck cargo, these are opportunities that you could go after. And by the way, since it's in a source of salt stage, uh, you could pre-qualify with a partner company. All right. Uh, everything we're talking about is public information. Everything that we're showing you is readily available. I'm just showing you how to get it, get access to it. And don't forget, hold on. All right. I'm making it bigger so I can read it. All right, so let's see. Voice Charter, Source of SOT. Uh, this says DHA, Executive Board Dashboard Development Support. Um, I know people do that kind of stuff. Radio Frequency, Medical Material Support Offices. Ooh, I want to look at that one. So let's go. I, what I did is I grabbed the notice ID. I'm going to go back over here to the other screen. Drop it in here. Hit search. Pulls it up. All right. Let me see what this looks like. Hold on. Let me see what this looks like. Again, if you see anything you like, let me know. We're going to go through and actually do this stuff for real. Yo, what happened? This thing made me log in again. Sam is having some glitches. Okay, here we go. Here's the offices. Open a new tab. What's the problem? Huh. All right, so, oh, there it is. All right, finally, they got on the screen. All right, here we go. All right, so here we go. Medical Enterprise Support Offices. Let me see what this is. Falls Church, Virginia. Administrative Management and General Management Consulting. Conducting research to identify resources and capabilities to assist the DHA and its medical support office to continue enterprise-wide medical material standardization program to close the gap between institutional and operational standardized decisions, improve efficiency and effectiveness of both institutional and operational environments, improve joint commonality and interoperability, promote cost-effective structure, meet common and unique service operating requirements. I don't know what any of that means. That's not what I do. And that's too complicated for me. I'm going to go back to some regular stuff. Um, someone said, what's the source of SOT notice? Source of SOT is the market research. This is the government doing market research to determine if there are small businesses who can fulfill a need. Uh, PM and repair services for Siemens MRI system. Air handler unit repair. See, that's more my speed. I know what, that, what an air handler unit repair is. Modular pharmacy clean room rentals. Ooh. Now, I could do that. All right. I could do that. Let's see if it kicks me out again. What's wrong with Sam? All right. It's acting a little janky. Y'all know what janky is? Is that a little janky? Modular pharmacy clean room rental. They need it. Um, WJB, Dorm Bay Medical Center. Equipment rental leasing. This is a modular clean room unit. I have people that know can do it. Term rental will be six months with option extend for six months. All right. Each modular clean room unit must be a minimum of 14 by 47, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, definitely something I can do. Um, and it gives me the requirements. 
All right, I like that one. That's a good one. Let's keep going. By the way, keep dropping your questions, keep dropping your chats, and keep hitting the like button. Satellite TV services for Buffalo and Batavi VA Hospital Services. Center for Research Laboratory membership. The Center for Research Libraries is an international consortium of more than 240 college, university, and print libraries that makes available through interlibrary loans and digital delivery files. Let's take a look at this. This sounds like a software solution that the government's looking for. Let's take a look at this and see. This looks interesting. This sounds like they're looking for a software solution, but let me make it. It's called Periodical Publishers. I don't see what they told us what they want us to do. They want to, it's, it tells us what it is. Center for Research Libraries is an international consortium of more than 240 college university independent research libraries that makes available through interlibrary loan and digital delivery, approximately 5 million publications and collections and 1 million digital resources to member libraries to supplement their humanities, science, and social holdings. Founded in 1949, it supports original research and inspired teaching humanities, sciences, in social sciences by preserving and making available to scholars a wealth of rare and uncommon primary source materials from all world regions. This announcement is for informational purposes only. Don't tell me what I'm supposed to do. You see, that's an example when I tell you like this, some of this stuff is weird. How are you supposed to know what are, uh, is the job that you're doing? Like it, it doesn't even make any sense. So, um, sometimes these things get a little bit weird, but the, 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 the benefit of this, the good, the, so let me, let's talk about the positive of that. Um, we had one of our students that actually responded to something like that because it fell into his, um, NAX code. Uh, so the good thing about this is you can actually help them shape the requirements at this phase of the process, because when the government's writing out a request like that and they don't know like what to do. Um, they're looking for people like you, professionals and experts to come in and help provide them a solution. So uh, that's something that's super important. And I just want people to know, is this better? And I want people to know because uh, they're, instead of being frustrated about it, look at it as an opportunity, right, for you to actually come in and help shape the requirements. And that actually speaks to the question that this person has here, which is, where do we find SAP and micro purchases? This is where you find them at. Because now what you're doing is uh, a lot of the stuff, uh, the solution to that might be an SAP type project, size project. So you're gonna go in, because remember, this is not a bid at this point. So what happens is now you're going in, who's that, As box office, and you're telling the government, hey, I can, solve that problem they may never put this out for bid and so when they don't put out for bid because of the size it may become sap type of work that they work directly to you because of the size requirements they don't have to actually put it out solicit it for public bid so just wanted to share that as well let's go back over here to our excel spreadsheet keep asking questions good question press break gps position data loggers iClinic software Patient lifts. Oh, sorry. I, I hit the button. Um, go back. Okay, let's see. Maintenance equipment and supplies, BPA. People always ask maintenance equipment and supplies. Let's pull that one up. Let's see what we got here. All right, El Paso VA Health System.
That looks like my thing acting up. Close out some of these windows. All right, maintenance equipment and supplies, BPA. Blanket purchase agreement. Let's see what the government's looking for in this particular opportunity. People ask me all the time about products. All right, here it is. Here's the list. Building maintenance services supplies. Let's take a look. See what this PDF says. I'm downloading it. Here's the scope of work. All right. Now, look at this. This is interesting because I think a lot of times when people say, Eric, I'm not sure where to start and what to do. Uh, this is interesting because take a look at this. Overview. Provide a simplified method for authorized personnel to purchase quality materials used on work orders for construction, recurring maintenance, repair, and support of whatever this thing is. The contract should provide easy access for authorized individuals to obtain a wide variety of commercial industrial products, items found in commercial stores like Home Depot and Lowe's. Do y'all see that? Items found in commercial stores. The contract should provide uninterrupted across the counter service for customers to acquire products from store stock as well as non stock items. Okay, it's the one base year with four year optional years of exercise. This FVIX thing will obligate funds against contract at time award by placing the order. So, um, I don't know what this thing is. I have to figure out what this This sounds like some kind of software or. Okay, it's some kind of exchange system that they have. So it, it definitely, this is more of a programming type of project. Interesting. Oh, here it is. Oh, look, the El Paso Veterans Affairs Health Clinic System. There you go. So EPVHS, I thought it was software. It stands for El Paso Veterans Affairs Healthcare System. Oh. So it's easy. So they need a one awardee to provide project manager a next day of materials, equipment, parts, repair items, supplies for construction. Project manager implement the program for El Paso Veterans Affairs on uh, logistics. So have materials, equipment, parts, supplies for construction facilities and repair or through a web-based process to cross-check the contract to flag special orders, open market, and unusual specialty items. So again, when people talk about like if where should we start, um, what what should I be looking for, what kind of opportunities exist, this is exactly what I'm saying that this stuff is out here. Um, but what happens is, in my opinion, this is not going to go out and be solicited on the open market. And so if you're not here looking at it before it hits open market, you're going to say, well, I never heard of that before. Uh, ceiling lift motors, blackboard mechanics kits, printer trays, general maintenance. Keep dropping your questions in there. I'm, I'm monitoring the chat at the same time. And then Maria's out there monitoring the chat as well. Elevate maintenance and troubleshooting. Are you unable to execute an elevated maintenance contract? Spine implement removal tools, Siemens technology energy management system. I think, uh, Marie, I think actual, my boy John is certified for Siemens. I got to highlight this. Let's see. I think John's certified for Siemens dealer. All right, let's see. Scientific support for viral diseases branch, battery power source, Bentley micro station. Yeah, I didn't even know Bentley sold micro stations. 
Uh, nine month extension of US Army wide engineering support services. Level two armed security guards. Ductless mini split HVAC system, UPS maintenance and services, server racks, fire alarm replacements, local exchange carriers for origin. National local exchange carrier services. So for I, I know we've got a lot of people in trucking logistics. I don't know how many people actually do carrier services, but let's take a look at this. Okay, and let's see what they're talking about here. All right, National Local Exchange Care Service for Oregon and Washington. Ah, they're talking about telecommunications carrier. Uh, LEC, Local Exchange Carriers. Services and features include plain old television service, <laughs> PRL, DID, DOD, and caller ID. I, I would have never thought they want phone services. That's pretty basic stuff. All right. Yeah, I don't know why the government wants some outdated phone services, but they got a reason for it. Let's go back to our spreadsheet over here. Hand sanitizer refills. Government still buying hand sanitizer, still buying PPP, PPE. Vacuum daily rental. Consultation, drafting documents and compliance or architectural agenda. Medical air dryers, intrusion alarms, maintenance. Crew seats. Government owned ATVs, repair and maintenance. Little Rock, Arkansas. Or Little Rock Air Force Base. Sorry. I almost said Lo Siento. <laughs> water delivery services, bottled water. Who can't deliver bottled water? Tell me, raise raise your hand if you could deliver bottled water to the government. Raise your hand. If you think you could deliver bottled water to the government, put in the chat a thumbs up. Bottled water delivery services. <laughs> Old phone system, less hackable. Makes sense. But you would think they'd already have a whole phone system. I mean, who doesn't have a whole old phone system? All right, bottled water delivery services. Let's take a look. This will probably never make it out into a contract because someone's going to do it. Why would they put this out in a contract? Ooh, now that's a little bit advanced, but I still think you can pull it off. The U.S. Army Environmental Command Southeast Division has a need to procure bottled water equipment with water refill delivery services for residents whose water supply no longer meets the criteria for safe drinking water. The government intends to award a blanket purchase agreement and issue a firm fixed price calls orders to fulfill this need or requirement. So it sounds like to me, they want the, you know, the station we have it in my mom's house, the thing with the three pound, the jugs that turns over. But again, all that stuff you can provide. But it does say bottled water. So let's see. Let me pull it down. Let me pull down the document and see what it says in the draft document. Let me pull this down. Wow. All right, let me let me share this with you guys. I want y'all to see this. Hold on. Give me a second. Check this out. Statement of work. 
Environment Southeast Division needs to procure bottled water equipment with water delivery service residents who don't have meat supply. Bottled water service will provide portable drinking water residents who live within 100, 200 mile radius of the following nine military installations. Let me zoom in. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Fort Benning, Gillum Enclave, Fort Gordon. These military administrations are located in five states, Georgia, Kentucky, South Carolina, North Carolina, Alabama, within the U.S. South region. The initial delivery contract should deliver and install one water dispenser and one five-gallon bottled water to residents in need of portable drinking water. Initial delivery occurred within one or three business days after receipt of the order. Quantity residents and specific address will be specified at the BPA call order level. However, it's anticipated that approximately 50 homes at each of the nine installations for a total of 450 residences um, when they eat into water delivery services. Anticipate each resident will need about five refills per month. The water bottles and dispenser shell at a minimum will meet the following requirements. Five gallon water bottle jug, water gallon jug, be five gallons of water, portable drink of water. So, um, there you have it. Now, some last question. What was your question? Let me see what you got here. Ah. All right. Uh, Beauty and the Beast, Women in Construction, says, you think that you can fulfill some of the requests, such as delivering water. Do you first reach out to a new water company to see if they can fulfill the request, then move forward with bidding? Now, uh, Beauty and the Beast, this is not a bid. Everybody watching this, this is not a bid. There's no bid here. Remember, let's go back to what the government says. This is sources sought. They're doing market research. There is no bid involved. Make sure that you're using the proper language when you're describing these things. Sources sought, notice, and statement of work. It's not a bid. Sources sought. All right. Um, so, right now, this is sources sought, notice. Uh, and typically, with the sources sought, notice, the government asks you if, in fact, you can do the work. Uh, and then, once they've determined, the, on a source of thought notice, typically well, they'll ask you for name of your company, the name of your, uh, your name, contact information, DUNS, and then they will ask you also uh, to show like how you can provide, how you can meet this requirement, essentially. Uh, and then, a lot of times what happens is, is that they're trying to determine, like, uh, the person just said that whether or not this should go out officially for a bid or if there is a small business who can actually address that. So, like Maria just said, it's not to turn you away from it because it's not a bid. Uh, it's actually you getting ahead and learning about the requirement, helping to shape the requirement, helping the government to know in their market. Re we're, we're in the market research phase of the requirements. You may have the opportunity to suggest to the government a more effective way of doing this, uh, a more efficient way of actually soliciting this. Uh, and you also may be able to suggest to them uh, how they should make the requirement. Maybe if they're going to put this out for bid, maybe you want them to put it out for women-owned small businesses, right? Because yourself and Yolanda and Maria got together and all responded and then... Right. And then they said, oh, there's three women on businesses that can do this. Let's make it a woman on business. Uh, so that's first and foremost. But yes, uh, ultimately, you would reach out to someone. Yes. At first to figure out if, in fact, uh, they have the ability to, to do this. And then you could respond with that company's information, um, letting them know how you plan on fulfilling this order. So, yes, you've got the right order of operations, but you got to be careful with the language just because uh, that's super, super critical. Um, let's see. Someone else asked a question. How do you respond to these types of contracts? I just answered that. 
Someone else asked the question, with this contract, will I have to pay and get reimbursed? With every government contract, you're going to have to pay and then get reimbursed, except sometimes with, there are exceptions because it's not, nothing's nothing 100%, but 99.9% .9 of the contracts at the federal level, you will have to first spend your money and then get reimbursed. All right, so yes, that is the case, Joy Canton. Um, yes, and Maria said it right. Do not let it push you away. Uh, the, the reason why we're showing you this is because this is where you are mining for gold. You are mining for gold here. This is how you get on an inside. When people say, Eric, where are the SAPs? Where are the micro purchases? Where are the credit card purchases? This is where they're at. This is us mining for gold. You keep doing this. I, there's 74 people on this watching right now. If you continue to do this, 74 out of 74 people will win a contract. If you continue to do this, 74 out of 74 people will win a contract. Guaranteed. Because 95% of the people are not doing this. So you just, a lot of times, you just have to show up and be responsive. Period. Find someone that can do it because they're not doing this. They're not They're not on this site looking for this type of information. The people who have the capacity and the capability of doing this are not watching this channel and they're not on this site. So you use that to your advantage and then you can go out, right? And they're going to, let's say, right, there's, let's say you go out and you tell somebody, right? And they're like, oh man, look, you know what, Adrian, I, I, she don't even know how to do water stuff, man. That's what I do. I'm going to go ahead and find that bid myself and do it. What do you think they're going to find? Where are they going to find a bid at? There's no bid to find. So th they could go and looking for it, but there's no bid to find. So them trying to be all oh, Mr. and Mrs. Smarty Pants, they're not going to find nothing. Even if they go searching for it, there's no bid. There's nothing publicly posted. And a lot of times, they don't get posted. That's why when we talk about um, only about four, what was it? Forty-five percent of the opportunities are posted. The rest of them are gone out direct awards. So, I uh, just want to kind of keep that in mind for everybody. Let's keep it rolling because it's six thirty and we're pushing an hour. Um, and all the new people out here, we are talking about sources sought bidding, not bidding, right? Because we're not bidding per se. However, these are bid opportunities because this is where you dig in for gold or mining for gold, uh, where you're going to find your micro purchases, your simplified acquisition, your credit card purchases are going to be found right here. So if people are asking, Eric, where do I find micro purchases? Where do I find SAPs? Here. This is where they're at. Here. All right. This is where you're going to find them. And this is where we're going to let people know that you're capable, you're qualified, and you're able to perform and fulfill the work. All right. Good stuff. Also, like I said, and if you're just joining us now, um, make sure to take a look at our members only section because we just turned back on our exclusive members only content. Uh, YouTube had kicked me off for a while because we actually said that some of our content was kid friendly. So they took me down. But take a look for as low as $5 a month, you can sign up and get access to an additional 43 plus videos that are organized by chapters. So you're gonna get a lot of content. I know that my courses, uh, they're a little bit pricey for some people. So this is an alternative to give people still access to more information to further their journey, to further their learning for very little money. So, all right, let's keep it moving. Back to the spreadsheet over here. Earn value management training. Anybody does training? Elevators, uh, wait, we had an elevator person. Elevators preventive maintenance services. Where's my elevator person? Where's my elevator person? I had an elevator person on here. Where are you at, elevator person? John Harden said, call me water boy. <laughs> Yo, where my elevator person? I know I saw somebody here say they do elevator repairs. Somebody said it. All right. I can't find it now. Uh, all right. Well, listen, elevator person, drop it in the chat. We'll come back to it. 
indoor cycles, medical scrubs, and shoes. Look, this is, again, people say, Eric, where, where are the products at? Here we go. Here's some products for you. Here's some products for you. All right. Medical scrubs and shoes. Maria, I told you, we're getting back into the medical supplies. Here we go. Medical scrubs and OCP print. Pull it up. Man, Sam has been so janky today. All right, medical scrubs and shoes. Sources uh, apparel, right? Shoes which are comfortable, supportive, and non slipping leather or material which can be easily cleaned. Medical scrubs and OCP print. Bomb. Newcastle, Delaware. That's it. That's all he wrote. <laughs> That's all he wrote. So in this particular case, uh, what I would recommend is to go over to our website here, grab this letter of intent here, and then use that to respond to them um, and let them know that you are interested and you have the capabilities of providing. Hold on. Where is it at? That's the water. All right. Um, because I have people that I know that are in the industry that are very familiar with medical scrubs and shoes. So uh, definitely take a look at that. That's People ask about materials all the time. They say, Eric, well, what about products? You're talking about services all the time. Firearm training range memberships. Annual tower certification. Lithium battery charging stations. Residential treatment services. Homeless veterans. Lalani, Lalani does this. She does residential treatment services. Furniture, we've got we've had people in our in our course that does furniture. Barracks furniture, it's not hard. Lease of space. Laundry Linen Services, St. Louis VA Health Center. We have someone that actually won a source of sought for providing laundry and linen services. Here's another elevator service and maintenance contract. Golf carts. Golf carts. Pretty basic. Pretty easy. Right? One second. All right, Let's see what else we got. ACR and boiler training, clothes cleaning systems. I'm gonna pull up two more. I gotta go. I'm got. I'm getting hungry. Gotta give me some food in my belly. Was this fun? Did you guys enjoy it? Um, this is. I mean, this is. I'm giving you all the tricks of the trade. Submarine rescue vessels, ocean towing support, janitorial services. Boom. Information technology knowledge base. Preventive maintenance. Sounds like some more janitorial services to me. Uh, sure, power cable. Hey, Maria. Power cable ACA. This is uh, one of our new scholarship winners. She does power cables. Some more health care for homeless veterans. Hey, somebody in real estate, if you got some houses, they're looking for a place to put homeless veterans. Um... Substance Prime Vendor Market Research, Australia. Substance. 
That word always twists up my tongues. I can't fix the Stinger weapon system. That's just, that's beyond my thing. Databricks training services. Nobody knows Databricks? Anybody here knows Databricks? Anybody knows how to use Databricks? Come on. Uh, asbestos abatement, IDIQ. I did a, a lot of asbestos abatement homes at Air Force Base. Find a good asbestos company. They'll make you look like a hero. Some more substance abuse housing. Let's pull this up because a lot of times when we, we think about investments, right, we forget these things. Let's pull this up. Let's take a look. Substance abuse housing. All right. Substance abuse housing. One of nine state work homeless programs, substance abuse treatment, and transitional housing. Uh, contractors for furnished services to beneficiaries for such care provide authorized by the Department of Veterans Affairs. It is certain type of patients to be cared for under this contract. Don't require contract to provide care and services above the level of room and board. It's pretty intense. But I know people that do this kind of stuff. So for me, this is not a big deal because I know people that do this. Uh, and they're always wondering where the contract opportunity is at. This is where they're at. So, again, if you or your family member or someone else provides this type of services, I mean, this is, this is, this, I mean, here it is. You see it for yourself with your own eyes. All right, a couple more things, a couple more. Let's see what else. Preventive maintenance repair, harbor safety patrol boats. And you know, you know what's so funny, right? Is some of this stuff sounds super complicated. You'd be surprised at kind of the contracts that Maria has. Uh, she's got stuff like this, like harbor patrol uh, dock repairs and things like that. And Maria will tell you herself that she literally goes on there, finds someone that can do the services, because nine times out of ten, the same guy that fixes the, the harbor patrol safety boats he doesn't or she doesn't want to do government paperwork. So you are going to be the liaison that says, look, I'm going to handle all the paperwork aspect. You just come in and do the, the physical work. And, um, you know, it makes sense. Ooh, this is my backyard. For me. Ooh, this is in my, well, in my backyard for my client is. Safety boats. Okay. So, all right, what else we got? Registered nurses, registered operating room nurses. Nurses are hard to find. Recruiting, staffing, and classification support services. I, we have people in our group, we have people on this call that do staffing services. And if you are not responding to this, I don't know what to tell you. Don't come client complain to me because here it is right in front of you. Computer assisted publishing system, maintenance dredging Delaware River. Uh, I know someone who's buying a, a dredging company. Technical assistance project for economic growth. All right, um, construct security force squadron canopy. Canopy is easy to, to build. Least office space. Chiefest, I'm calling Roberta for staffing. <laughs> paving IDIQ, oh my goodness. Um, paving IDIQs are all the time. Maria, they got some more docking and maintenance work for you. Uh, IDIQ, what for what? 
There's an IDIQ for Tampa Games at West Palm Beach Hospital. Oh, they're putting on another IDIQ. So I actually, I was on an IDIQ like this for the VA hospitals, and I could not get bonding in Puerto Rico. So we, I mean, it was a very, we made a lot of money, but we couldn't do Puerto Rico. Destruction disposal of expired pharmacy drugs. Ooh, I know somebody that could do that. Oh, yeah. I know someone that could do that. Custodial related services. $30 million single work task order for architect, engineer, IDIQ, mechanical, electrical, fire suppression, design services. I'm telling you, I know somebody in that field as well. Logistics and transportation services. All right. All my truckers, you've been waiting all night for this. Logistics and transportation SME in support of the Joint Staff Directorate for Logistics. Okay, the Joint Staff Directorate for Logistics requires senior subject matter expert T support to present the latest findings and insights in commercial logistics and transportation capabilities and provide this expertise. Uh, there was somebody on here earlier that said they had a solution for the truckers and that they were afraid of the government stealing them. Um, so here is your opportunity to provide your solution to the government. Let's go take a look at what this is. The Excel sheet, I actually downloaded the Excel sheet from sam.gov. All right, this is, this is a little bit different. Okay, in the sense that what they're asking for is subject matter expert support to provide insights into commercial logistics and transportation capabilities and to provide this expertise at collaborative challenge sessions, um, work experience at the highest levels of their career field and keen understanding of concept driven threat informed capability development. And it goes in and give you some more stuff on here. I have a feeling that the people who participate in this, uh, they are going to be making decisions for how the government solicits uh, logistics services and how they administer in the future. So if I were uh, a person that was in this field, I would uh, attempt to be part of these challenge sessions so that, in fact, the government would invite me to participate and help shape the upcoming requirements. This is how you get on the inside. Customer service supports. Look, that's another staffing contract. That's customer service support contract. Again, um, there's people who, are, who have those kind of companies. Holland's Manufacturing Extension Program, Reporting and Survey Contract. Um, these people get a lot of money. I'm going to pull this up later on when I get some time. Body Armor, Garbage and Refuse, Disposal Services for U.S. Capitol, D.C. Fire Damage Coolers, Laundry, More Laundry service. Look, if you want to start you a laundry business, my man, I know my man had a car wash. But I think you need to change that car wash to uh, a wash house to do laundry because there's a lot of stuff on here about laundry. Some more dredging, some more dredging. Shoot, looks like we need a dredging company. Anybody know a dredging company? Ooh, renovate space. Wait, is this Providence? Like Providence, Rhode Island? Is this my neighborhood? Is this my neighborhood? Hold on, baby. Hold on. 
I might found something. I might have found something. Hold on. Is this Providence, Rhode Island? I'm about to jump for joy. Department of Veteran Affairs. Hold on. Hold on. Contracting office, man, where this thing at? Yep, it is. Ooh. Providence Road Island. Ooh. All right, I got me something. Look. I might have been doing this for y'all, but I found me something for me too. So I might have been doing this for y'all, but I'm going to go ahead and put this one to the side. I found me, me. There's something for me over here. Oh, yeah. Bump, bump. All right. I got me something. Bam. All right. What else? Hold on. We're going we're gonna to close out a minute. Dang, nobody signed up for our membership. Dang, Marie, I didn't do a good job telling people all the advantages that we offer. Um, 3.0 course is out, by the way. Let's see. I got me something to respond to. Warehouse, mail, courier, and transportation services. Look, all of you truckers, all the logistics folks out here. There you go. Warehouse, mail, courier, and transportation services. My father used to work for a private carrier truck company that did, did the mail runs. And he drove a semi-truck for this carrier doing mail runs. More housekeeping services. Temporary hangar and office structures. We could do that. Scaffolding. Done that before. All right, I'm going to put this last one, and then we're going to sign out. I'm going to put this last one, and then we're going to sign off today. Where is it at? Not the elevated maintenance. Where is the, the carrier one? Design build, RDIQ. Ooh, Pensacola. I wonder if these guys saw this. Oh, this is perfect. ROTC support services. Oh, Adrienne, thank you. Wait, I think I can do something. All right. Adrian, thank you for signing up for our membership. Uh, one more. Let's see. I was looking for it. You guys see it? I was looking for that logistics one. I was going to pull that one up before we signed off today. Yes, Yolanda, these are just source of socks. Oh, this one. No, it was the mail carrier one. This one. 
warehouse transportation. Hey, was there any? Is there anybody on here that was on here uh, earlier today that remembers when we were pulling up? Hold on. Uh, you guys remember when we pulled up this person's SBA profile earlier today who did logistics? Uh, turn it. I, it's gone now. Let me see something. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a person who we put up their profile today that did logistics. Uh, I remember as a woman, let me see if we can find her again. And the reason why I'm, I'm asking is because it's because we were looking at her, her, uh, profile and uh, I just want to show you the connection. Thanks a lot. I want to show the connection because uh, one of the things, my man um, who does the car wash services, um, one of the things that I want you to see is you notice here in the government's requirements, it says warehouse, mail, courier, transportation services, right? Those are key words that would go inside of your SBA profile. Oh, there he is. All right. Right. So if you look at, you remember that these key words that she had listed was warehouse, transportation. So this is, yes, this video does get loaded. Um, so this is an example of someone who understands how the government solicits this types of projects and was prepared for that. So again, when you're talking about fixing your SBA profile over here, oh, sorry, over here, Right, when you're talking about fixing your SBO profile over here, this is where do you find the words that go into there? Well, here it is. Look at the what they're using when they're soliciting projects and soliciting work. That's how you find out what keywords the government's looking for. Um, transportation, travel, relocation. Oh, this is in Hawaii. Ebert Manuel, thank you for becoming a member. Thank you. All right. Place of performance. They want warehouse, mail, courier, and transportation services. They shall be required to perform services indoors, outdoors, and dock areas, storage yards. And they want to show that you have the capability to do it. Uh, here's the draft PDO. I was going to say PWS, but it's, oh, it is PWS. Good. Let's pull it down. We'll take we'll look at this. Yolanda, uh, we'll talk about the SBA profile. All right. Service on this contract may be accomplished primarily in this regional center. Campus comprises seven buildings, two hangars, two ship piers located in Fort Island Pearl Harbor. Monday through Friday. Oh, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, let me zoom in. It looks a little small on my screen. All right. So it says the country shall provide furnished labor, supplies, equipment, materials, transportation, otherwise. Furnished by government necessary to perform warehouse, mail, courier, transportation services at NOAA Regional Center. Uh, indoors, outdoors, debt areas. So you're doing warehousing services, mail services, transportation services, and courier services. This is a big. This is a big contract. This is a big contract. Um, 
Yeah, it's a big contract. So, listen, uh, we ran over a little bit today. I hope that everyone enjoyed today's session. It's a lot of fun for me. I hope it's just as much fun for you. Uh, we'll be sharing more coming on. And also, if you missed yesterday where we talked about federal government and cryptocurrency, we will be discussing uh, more about that, how to get involved in cryptocurrencies. We'll be explaining what it is, what it means, uh, as well as government contracting. I just believe that in the very near future, we're all going to be paid in tokens. In the very near future, we're all going to be paid in tokens. Um, I can't say if it's two years out or five years out, but if you wait until it's already happened, you're going to be too late. And at this point, it's still a lot of opportunity for a lot of people. So again, thank you for coming on. Thanks for enjoying the session today. I look forward to it. Share it with somebody that you care about or don't share it at all. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks, Chieftain.